Good morning. And technically, technically, I should say, Happy New Year. We begin our new church year this Sunday with our first Sunday in Advent. We begin our rather short journey through this season of Advent, preparing us to celebrate the season of Christmas. And so we've got the blue out, the candles are ready to go, I hope, and uh, we'll enter into this season. We begin our time together with our time of confession and forgiveness. We worship together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who's faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll be singing of the Father's love begotten, verses 1, 3, and 5.
we continue with the Advent candle lighting. Blessed be God, the eternal one in three, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be God forever and ever. During a season of busyness and in a culture that demands immediate response, we pause and wait for your appearing. In the midst of anxiety, chaos, and fear, we pause and trust that your hand is leading us. Uncertain about the future and weighed down with worries in the present, we pause and know your presence fully. Come, O Christ, and set us free. Come, Emmanuel, bring in your reign of justice and peace. As we light the first Advent candle, we wait for a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness is at home. I'm going to have the kids come forward for a little kids' time at a little different time than usual. Come on up. Good morning, good morning. Hey there. Uh-oh, I see a belly button. I don't know, I think I'm blinded by sparkles this morning. Wow, it's beautiful. Well, I just got to have fun lighting the very first Advent candle. Does anybody know why in the world I'm lighting special candles now? Any guesses why in the world? We're going to be doing that now. Yes. Because it's the first Sunday in Advent. That is right. It's the first Sunday in Advent. This is a season that comes before Christmas. This is a time where we're meant to be getting ready, getting prepared to celebrate. <coughs> and so we're going to count down all the weeks. There's four weeks. And so each Sunday we'll light one more candle. So next Sunday I'll light two and then there'll be three, and then there'll be four, and then it'll be Christmas Eve. Boom. It goes really, really fast. And so we can kind of count down. How many of you have um, ever used Advent calendars before? Yeah? Tried those before? Well, I'm going to give each one of you a different kind of Advent calendar that I came across. You can use it if you want. You don't have to. It's up to you but it's called the Advent Spiral. You see, here's, this is December 1st, right here is the first week, right there. And this would be the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and the seventh and the eighth, which is the beginning of the second week. And you keep going day by day by day until you get to the very center of everything. The very center of our lives. Let's see, one, two, three, four. All of a sudden I feel like a teacher going, okay, how many handouts go down this way? All right. So I was kind of hoping whether you use, the, you use this or however you might do it. I'm hoping that you guys will do, help do the countdown this year. We need one more. We need one more? Okay, I, I did not count well, sorry, Henry. I'm not counting well this morning. There we go. Now, you can, what you can do is you can just color each day as you go along. Another option is you put this on a table, and you have a little figurine, a little somebody, who walks this path. You move them every day. A friend of mine um, would use the little, she had her nativity set, you know, and then she'd take baby Jesus out of the nativity set, and she would use the baby Jesus to follow along, and not till she got to the center star, then she would put baby Jesus in the nativity scene because that's when we celebrate him being born. I also had a friend of mine whose son was super into Pokemon, and he had a little Pokemon figurine, and that's what he used. So you can use whatever you want. But what the, whether you use this or use anything else, this is our time to kind of be counting down and getting ready, 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 ready. How do we get ready for Christmas? How in the world do we do that? Yes. What do you think? Yeah, we sure can decorate, absolutely. We get to decorate our homes, we get to decorate the churches. I'm guessing there might be some present shopping going on. I'm guessing you might have told a few people what you might like for Christmas. 
But you know what? That's just all the extra stuff. We're meant to be preparing our hearts, right? That Jesus has a place in our hearts. We have to make sure that he, he finds a place in our lives too. And so we're meant to use this time to really think about how we do that and whether Jesus finds a home with us. So I'm gonna ha- you can take these home. Like I said, you don't have to use them, but if you do, I hope you can count on down. We're already on this, this dot right here. Because we, we had the, we're in the first week, we had December 1st, 2nd, and today's December 3rd. So whether you color it or use a little figurine, and we will together do our journey to Jesus. Okay? All right, let's have a quick prayer before I send you back. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming, coming into our hearts and coming into this world. Help us to get ready for your celebration of your birthday. And Lord, please make our hearts and lives a welcoming place for you. Amen. All right, thanks, guys. We get to sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, a couple verses of that. Lord be with you. Let's pray together our prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn now to the reading of our lessons. Um, The first lesson this morning is found in Isaiah chapter 64. This lament comes from a people who have had their hopes shattered The visions of a rebuilt Jerusalem and a renewed people of God spoken of in Isaiah 40 through 55 have not been realized. Instead, the people experience ruin, conflict, and famine. This lament calls God to account, to be the God who has brought deliverance in the past. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. 
We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. We'll now read responsibly Psalm 80, beginning with verse 1. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears, and you have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. And so we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The second lesson this morning is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. As the, Christian, as the Christians in Corinth await for the advent of Jesus, Paul reminds them how the Lord has already enriched them through spiritual gifts and will continue to strengthen them until the coming day of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the reading. I invite you to stand as we sing our gospel verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark in the 13th chapter. Glory to you. Jesus encourages his followers to look forward to the day when he returns in power and glory to end all suffering. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey <clears throat> when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, 
for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he might find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, <clears throat> I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and redeemer. Amen. During the season of Advent, there are certain words and certain phrases, certain images that we are commonly used. Each season has its own um, words, its own images. And for Advent, we get to hear things like we heard in our gospel lesson today, keep awake. Keep awake. Be prepared for any, any moment. Those are some of the theme words as we go through this season. Keep awake. Be prepared. Be aware that Christ indeed will return and that he would hope to find us living the life that he has called us to live, find us awake and alive to his spirit. This is meant to be good news. This is meant to be an assurance of the good that indeed will come. Now, quite often through history, people have gotten really caught up and worried about the supposed signs for when Jesus is going to return. How do we figure out when that's going to happen? Some people have counted syllables or consonants and figured out a Bible code. And I mean, people get really caught up in this stuff, especially when you go to the book of Revelation. And they get so caught up in figuring out when is this going to happen? And over the years, through, through the generations, there have been different times when folks have said, I figured it out. I figured it out. I read the Bible really carefully. And I figured it out. And Jesus is going to return on this day at this time. And through history, there are folks who have absolutely embraced that, have sold everything that they had, and gone and waited on that hill for Christ to come. And there is no light show. There is no dis disappearing of the believers. There is no great event, and yet another day comes. I think people so easily get caught up in the wrong point of all this, right? The point isn't the uh, sun being darkened, the moon not giving the light. It isn't the point of all those crazy sort of images and language we hear in the book of Revelation. What is the point of what Jesus is saying? Why is he saying these things? That's, that's what we need to take a look at. He's saying things are going to happen which can be a sign for you. But nonetheless, we don't know when. There is no way to know when this is going to happen. So the point is, what? Keep awake. We don't know. Lots of different times, terrible things have happened around the world, and people have said, there's a sign. There's the sign of Jesus returning. Um, at some points in my lifetime, I've heard people say after the Vikings have pulled out an incredible win that just couldn't have happened, oh my goodness, is Jesus returning? <laughs> and I may have been known to say that myself. <sighs> but the point of all of this, and the point of this kind of language, is to recognize that we are indeed preparing for Christ to enter into our lives each and every day. Because what we're doing is not just simply looking ahead to something. We are celebrating the ways that God and Christ have been present in the past. We look forward to what God will be doing in our future. And we live with Christ's presence each and every day. So we keep awake, we keep alert, we be prepared for Christ to enter our lives each and every day. We're not waiting for someday because Christ is with us now. Yes, there will be the new heaven and the new earth and Christ coming down out of the clouds and oh, wow. But Christ is in our hearts each and every day. And are we prepared? Are we opening up our lives and our hearts to receive him each and every day? 
because he promises to be with us. Our first lesson in Isaiah is a lament. It's a recognition of all the things that have gone wrong, a recognition of the pain and suffering that people have gone through. And it calls out to God saying, you have delivered us in the past, deliver us again. We have seen you be faithful before. We ask you to be faithful now and in the future to come. Because we know that's what kind of God you are. You are the one who brings deliverance. And in our, first, our second lesson in 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about how God seeks to strengthen them and help them in life as they prepare for the coming day of the Lord, recognizing that this is something brought to us day by day. I remember before people would come to celebrate Christmas, at my home when I was growing up, I remember the flurry of activity. And we all had our assigned chores, right? There's a lot of vacuuming to be done, a lot of dusting to be done. There's a lot of toys to be put away. There are these special dishes to be brought down and wiped out and make sure they're ready to go in the giant roasting pan, right? Everything, there's plenty of things on that list to get ready, right? But we knew, we knew when everybody was supposed to be showing up. And we knew what time the meal was supposed to be. Ludafisk, why? Why, Dad, why? <laughs> exactly, why? My mother makes amazing Swedish meatballs. That's the only thing that saved it. <sighs> My dad was sad. He says, I figure when I'm gone, you won't be doing Ludafisk anymore. And I'm like, that's right, Dad. <laughs> I will miss you but I will not miss the lunafisk. But we know, we had our roles. We know what we needed to do. We know when people were going to be there. We knew when the meal was going to happen, right? And we would get ready. But we also had some family friends who liked to every now and then just show up, right? So you had like a minute warning. You hear the crunch of the gravel as they're driving up the driveway. And we look out and we recognize the car. And you look around the house going, oh, we have company. And so there had to be a level of readiness, right? A level of preparedness. Things might not be perfect, but by golly, if friends show up unexpectedly, there's going to be coffee. And there's going to be a generally clean house, as clean as possible, considering there were three kids running around. Right? So there was preparing for special events, and then there was just that preparedness of regular life. Knowing that each day brings something new, knowing that there are certain things we need to be ready for, and just living that sort of preparedness. And so in this season of Advent, we are invited to recognize the way God has been present in the past, look forward to the ways that Jesus will return and bring glory to, the, to <clears throat> God and the world, and recognize how Christ is active and living yet today. It's kind of like every day is a little, a little Easter. Every day is meant to be a little Christmas. Every day is the day when... Your mother-in-law is showing up at your house, and you should be ready. My mother-in-law is actually pretty gracious about it, so I get off the hook. But it is about being prepared. It's about being awake, not simply for a celebration at Christmas, but for the fact that Christ is indeed born in our hearts each and every day. So welcome to Advent, and welcome to a new year in our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing Awake, Awake, for Night is Flying.
united in faith, let's make confession of what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to stand as we make our confession. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Gracious God, call your church into holy fellowship as we await the restoration of all things. Re-energize your faithful people to live with hope and compassion, especially those who serve as missionaries near and far. Center us on your promise to come among us and make all things new. Lord, in your mercy. All creation signals your presence, O God, the vastness of the cosmos, the turn of the seasons, and living things that both rest and flourish. Rekindle our commitment to care for the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let the nations tremble at your holy presence, that justice and liberation prevail in all corners of the earth. Restore peace to nations in conflict. Teach righteousness to corrupt leaders and systems, and bring stability to areas facing uncertain futures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enrich the spirits of all who feel hopeless, fearful, or despairing. Stay close to those who await healing or relief. We pray especially for Ryan, Roger, Linda, and Cheryl, for Barbara, Sharon, Clayton, Lorelai, Judy, and Rory, Amy, Janice, Faye, Darla, Karen, Alan, Gary, Dean, and Megan, Ricky, Misty, Marcy, and Brianna, Algernon, Sue, and Elisha, and there are so many others, Lord. See their names upon our hearts. Deliver all in any need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with all those who keep awake at night, nurses working overnight shifts, caretakers of newborns and aging adults, stargazers, those who are anxious or those who are traveling. Reveal to all that the dark can be a place of calm and comfort filled with your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have sent out your angels and gathered your faithful people from every time and place, calling them into one fellowship of saints. Bless the witness of those who dwell in your eternal presence. And Lord, surround all those who are grieving with your love and care. We pray especially for the family of Julie McClellan in the death of her father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with each other. We will receive the offering.
Let us pray our offertory prayer. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. In this meal, God offers us his forgiveness and strength. We prepare the table.
Let us pray. Generous God, in bread and cup you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release. Brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. It's always a little disconcerting to be locked back there. <laughs> but our announcements for today. Um, we will be decorating for Christmas. Like three out of the four churches are decorating today. So I hope if you can, if you can linger and help get our greens and up um, and everything else up. Always a fun, fun time. Tracy Lutheran Church is going to be having their annual Christmas tea on Wednesday from 2 to 4 with a short program at 2.15. And then get on your calendars that the St. Olaf Sunday School program is December 17th at 5.30 with a potluck to follow. <clears throat> Today is Chatech Ministries annual meeting and their Scandinavian dinner. This Wednesday will be our Bible study, 9 a.m. at English, and then again at 1. Confirmation is at 2.40. We get to cover Moses, so if anybody's interested in hearing about Moses or wants to teach about Moses, come on over. And then Thursday is men's Bible study at 7 a.m. at English. Country View has their communion worship service. And then next Sunday, English and Our Saviors have 8.30. Um, there's Sunday school, and then Trinity and St. Olaf, we have the 1030 service, and it's Bible Sunday. The Red Cross Bloodmobile will be in Walnut Grove Community Center on December 21st, and so take note on that. You can um, call to make an appointment for that. I think that is just about everything, just besides the reminder of uh, Mary and Martha Pantry in Westbrook looking for donations of gloves, mittens, socks, stocking caps, and they also will take coats because um, there's also a need for that kind of thing. All right, anything else? People need it, absolutely. This morning I was very grateful for my gloves as I was scraping the car. It's something we really, really need. All right, receive the blessing. The God of peace bless you, the love of Christ sustain you in hope, and the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. We'll sing, The King Shall Come.
there's a couple things I forgot to announce. Um, for December, we're doing the um, World Hunger, and we have a little tree back there with ornaments, and you can choose what you would like to give towards, and you hang an ornament on. Um, this is $30 towards a pig. Oh, the pig was pretty cute. Um, and then we have some things for the kids, some coloring books and um, coin banks and things if they would like to take a look at that. And then we have our Advent devotionals, a really, really good devotional, and we have copies of that in back as well. So please make use of those things. And go in peace and keep awake. We will. Thanks be to God.